Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Barry and I am so excited for today's video. We have a super awesome guest with us. Her name is Sarah Erica. She has actually been requested on my channel before. She has an absolutely amazing story, which I am so excited to share with you guys. So she was plagued with a number of health problems and she actually did a 365 day juice cleanse, I believe. So we're going to hear her whole story and find out exactly what happened to her. So let's get started. Hey, Sarah, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to chat with you, hear your story. You're so inspiring. So I first heard your story. I saw it on uh, Facebook and I thought it was absolutely incredible. So maybe let's start with sort of your health background and what sort of issues you had that led up to the juice cleanse. Yeah, sure. First of all, thank you. Um, it's, it's strange to hear that people think that my story is incredible because for me, it was just what I had to do to save my life. Um, but I really appreciate that. That's uh, really nice to hear. So thank you. Um, and yeah, my health was really bad for a long time. I had strange symptoms my whole life. Um, even in, in childhood, I had weird things going on, but nothing was ever serious enough to get looked at or it was never, I, in some way I thought that everyone felt this way or everyone had these things. I thought everyone got a little dizzy when standing up. Um, I thought that everyone could taste last night's dinner the next morning and woke up full. I didn't understand how some people could eat breakfast or what, what the, I didn't understand. I just thought it was a normal thing. Um, so nothing was ever really serious enough to get looked at or checked out. And um, when I was 20 years old, I moved to Israel where I joined the Israeli army. And the day that I enlisted, I was given four military grade vaccines. Um, I wasn't allowed to opt out of it, or if I was allowed, I didn't know that I was able to. Got these shots, and from there, my health spiraled out of control. Wow. Um, where I ended up being medically discharged from the military. Um, I couldn't hold anything down. I um, was eventually diagnosed with gastroparesis, uh, global intestinal dysmotility, um, dysautonomia, uh, ehlers danlos syndrome. Basically, you name it, I pretty much had it. There wasn't a system in my body that was functioning the way that it should have been. And a lot of that, I was told, was due to um, the vaccines because I did have mercury toxicity and antimony toxicity. Um, we found both of those in my bloodstream and my hair. Um, but a lot of it also was due to Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a genetic connective tissue disorder, which impacts um, the collagen in the body. So basically a healthy person's body produces collagen. It's like a rubber band. When you pull mm -hmm. a rubber band, it expands, but it'll go back and retain its shape. In Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, a person who has this syndrome, their collagen that's produced is like a, an old rubber band. So it'll stretch out, but it'll stay stretched out. It doesn't snap back into place. So if you think of collagen in the body like a rubber band, everything that uh, stretches like smooth muscle and all the collagen that holds the joints together, it's supposed to snap back into place with me or with people with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, it doesn't. So um, collagen is, again, the stuff that holds our joints together, but it's also in all the smooth muscle in our body and the entire digestive system is pretty much made up of smooth muscle. So for me, that translated into um, not being able to hold anything down. Um, some days, literally, I would, I, would, I would be vomiting upwards of 20 times a day. Um, they had me drinking feeding tube formula while I was living in Israel because I was losing so much weight so rapidly. And how old, sorry, how old were you when this was happening? So it started when I was about 20 years old. Wow. Which is typically the onset of when things get really bad with Ehlers-Danlos, but combined with the vaccine injuries, it was just a perfect storm. It was just too much after that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a perfect storm. Uh, my body couldn't handle it. And I put my body through a lot of stress as well, moving to the other side of the world by myself. I didn't move with any family. I moved alone. Um, to a country that I had been to once before, um, didn't speak the language. I had to learn the language. I was in a military. I put a lot of stress on myself, um, physically, mentally, emotionally. It was a lot for my body and my body rebelled. It was letting me know that something wasn't right. And I was doing something that it did not, that wasn't working. Um, so in a way, all this was a wake up call, but when things got really bad, I wasn't able to hold anything down at all. I was under hundred pounds, skin and bones, um, I eventually was able to, uh, they found a medication that allowed me to hold things down. This was in early 2017. Um, I was on the medication for a while, had to come off of things for tests, went back on the medication, didn't work anymore. I'd been in kidney failure. I'd been in organ failure. Um, I was a wheelchair user. I had a feeding tube. 
I was getting uh, saline infusions daily to keep me upright because I was passing out without them. It was not pretty. It was not a pretty situation at all. And I'd been told multiple times that I wasn't going to make it. Wow. In fact, the catalyst for wanting to change came by a doctor telling me that I should wrap my pretty little head just like that. He said, I should wrap my pretty little head around the fact that I'm just going to be sick forever. Wow. And feeding tube until my intestines shut down because he told me they will shut down. And then I'll have a central line to my heart to feed me. But because I'm such a high risk of infection, it's not going to last long and I'm just going to die early and I should give up and I should stop fighting it. And did you believe that? Because I know when you, I know like if you're just uh, like, I know a lot of times people would just believe what they say, right? Did you believe that inside or did your gut kind of tell you maybe you could like survive and get through this? At first I did believe it. Um, And I just, I stopped, I stopped trying things. But my mom, um, she came with me to all my doctor appointments. I wasn't well enough to drive. I barely had any memory function of my own. So my mom was taking notes, asking all the questions. She was my biggest advocate. She reminded me that um, I never liked listening to authority before. So why was I about to start? (laughs) (laughs) What a cool mom. That's great. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. She's like, Sarah, you you don't listen to it. Like authority is not your thing. So why are you listening to this guy when he's telling you that you're going to have the worst life imaginable? (laughs) Right. You're right. (laughs) So I like to say that I actually got healthy out of spite to prove this guy wrong. But um, around that same time, I had learned about juicing actually from my geneticist. I saw a geneticist for the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and she was telling me that um, she was a Gerson certified practitioner and the Gerson therapy, for those who don't know about it, um, it's a really powerful healing protocol, specifically for those for people with cancer. And she recommended that I do the juices and the special soup from the protocol because I couldn't handle the solid foods. Well, I hated the soup, but I loved the juice. So I just started juicing. And then I started going on Instagram and looking at people who juiced. And I found Jeff Juice's story on Instagram. I was like, wow, you know what? If he can cure himself through a 90 day juice fast, I wonder what I can do in a hundred days. So Um, I originally, my original plan was to juice fast and this was in November of 2019. And sorry to interrupt for a sec. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, so Jeff, I've never heard of him. What did, what kind of health problems did he have? Jeff was diagnosed with, um, Crohn's disease. Okay. He healed himself with a 90 day juice fast. Cool. Okay. Yeah. It was a really, it was really inspiring to see. And he was like my biggest inspiration, um, getting started on this journey because he was the first person that I saw who juiced, who was able to heal himself. So I was like, okay, if you can do 90 days of juice, I can do hundred days. Let's go. Let's get started. This, I originally tried starting in September, um, of 2019. Didn't stick with it. Wasn't able to, mentally. I wasn't, I wasn't there yet. Um, I knew that I had to do this to save my life, but there was still some resistance to the idea. I don't know what it was, but it stuck on November 15th of 2019. That was me, my first day of what was going to be a hundred day juice fast, which turned into 366 days because 2020 was a leap year. Unbelievable. You're the only person I've ever known who's done this long. I had somebody on my channel who he made it, he came on at 150 days and I thought that was incredible. I mean, any juice plants, anybody does is incredible. Even if you do three days, but to do 365 days, wow. You give me goosebumps. Congratulations. Cause <laughs> wow. You. Yeah. Thank you. I actually found juicing to be easier than eating surprisingly. Well, yeah. actually it's interesting. I wasn't able to eat solid food since 2014. I just wasn't holding anything down. That's when, um, that's when I had drafted to the, um, Israeli army. That's when, my health started going downhill after those vaccines. I just wasn't able to hold down solid food. Wow. Put in my system, I would come right back up. Um, and liquids were also questionable at some points. There were days at my worst where I would have a lollipop. Yeah. I would have a lollipop down. Yeah. Um, so I have a question. When you were juicing, um, I'm assuming your mom was supportive by the sounds of how she was. What about the other people around you, like other family, friends, or even like the doctors? Were they, were they aware of what you were doing? And did you get support from people or did you experience backlash? I experienced a little bit of backlash, not for my family. Thankfully, my family at this point, my family was desperate. They would have done, if they thought that me standing on my head every day and clapping would have cured me, they would have held my legs up. They, you know, they would have done yeah. anything. For me. Yeah. I'm very, very blessed and lucky that way. Other people around me didn't understand it. Um, but then again, I never really let the people around me 
see how bad things were. I didn't go out. Uh, people would come over to our house. So I would just be sitting the whole time. I wouldn't have to be in the wheelchair that way. People just didn't know um, because I was embarrassed and I was ashamed, which logically makes no sense, but that's, that's where I was emotionally at the time. And um, so I got a little bit of backlash from it. Oh, you're not eating. Why aren't you doing this? They didn't know that I couldn't eat. I mm -hmm. never mentioned that to anyone. I just kept it all hidden. No one's ever saw my feeding tube. It was all very, very secret, very hush hush. Um, but my doctors, I had some doctors who were just like, you know, I, at, at this point I had a team of specialists. I had like nine different doctors across different states that I was seeing. And people like you literally thought you might not live, right? Like you yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. And they uh, thought that the doctors, yeah. The doctors, the doctors were telling me that, listen, if you do live, it's going to just be, it's going to be a short life and it's just going to be, I, I was told to get used to the idea of just sitting around. Like that was, oh. I wasn't going to be able to do anything. It just, I got to a point where doctors weren't willing to try anything else because they were so scared to upset the delicate balance that they had found. This balance meant that I was in a wheelchair, that I wasn't um, able to eat solid food, that I had a feeding tube, but that to them was as good as it was going to get. So they were afraid to try anything else because if they upset that balance, they didn't know if they would be able to get me back to where I was. Mm -hmm. It was just maintaining the quality of life, which was pretty much non-existent that I had. It wasn't, um, there was no plan to move forward with anything. And you probably felt like I have nothing to lose by trying this, you know? Yeah. And it made sense in my brain because I remember learning that the body is powered by ATP. It, it runs on ATP. And what does the body need in order to generate this ATP? The one input it needs is glucose. It's sugar. Mm -hmm. So if I just flood my body with this sugar from this fruit juice, because I was drinking mm -hmm. primarily fruit juice, then I'm going to have this abundance of ATP in my system. And ATP powers everything, including cellular repair. Mm -hmm. So if it's myself to my body everything it needs my body will heal itself so it just means exactly. it wasn't it wasn't even a question it was I don't know how far this is going to how far this is going to take me on my health journey how far this will help me where it will get me but I know it will get me somewhere and I know it's better than what these doctors are doing and when you juice too I mean your body doesn't the body works the hardest to digest foods right it works so hard at digesting food so when you're not eating the solid food which you couldn't anyway but the juices are just flooding you with nutrients and then your body's able to work on healing other things Exactly. I believe during digestion, it like something like 70% of the blood from the body rushes to the digestive system in order to support that function. Mm -hmm. So if that wasn't happening on a daily basis, imagine what could have, I, I mean, I got to see firsthand what could have happened, but yeah, just, I, I could have never imagined that I would have gone from where I was to where I am. I didn't yeah. Think it would take me that far. But. Absolutely. It's incredible. And I have a question. So, so many people say I do some juicing and stuff too. Um, so many people say, what about all the sugars in fruit juices? Like, aren't the sugars bad for you? So what do you say? I'm sure people have asked you that. What is your response to that? The body runs on sugar. That's, mm -hmm. that's ATP is what powers the entire body. Everyone's heard from science class, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. What does mitochondria run on? ATP. ATP, the way that we synth our body synthesizes it is from one input and that's sugar. So all the sugar from fruit juice, all you're doing is you're powering your body in the most mm -hmm. efficient way possible because your body doesn't have to break anything down. The body is being flooded with this ATP. It's going straight into the bloodstream and you're giving yourself all of the power that you need. If you, if you think about it like this, a person drinks a cup of coffee in the morning, right? To wake up and get energized. If you drink a glass of orange juice, you get more power and more boost than you do from the caffeine in the coffee because your body runs on sugar. So there's no, there's no such thing as too much sugar in my opinion. Yeah. yeah same here. I thrive. I eat so much fruit too. I mean, I eat a balanced vegetables, nuts and seeds and everything yeah. too, but the fruit, it just gives you so much. It does so much for us. Yeah. It's, yeah. If we give the body what it needs, it does what it's supposed to do. And I gave yeah. my body pure sugar, pure sugar. And look at what it did. So and were you drinking, were you drinking vegetable juices as well? Like a mix of different juices? Primarily fruit juice. Wow. Um, yeah, Incredible. Cause a lot of people, even like a lot of juice cleanse coaches and people say like, do like 75% greens or 80% greens and the rest juice. When I do juice cleanses too, I like a lot of the fruits, but that's very interesting to hear. Thank you. And it wasn't so much about, 
I figured, right, if I'm going to, if I'm going to juice for as long as I'm going to juice for, I'm going to juice what tastes good. I'm not going to worry about what's in the juice. I'm just going to drink as much as I'm going to drink as much juice as I can, which at the beginning was very little in terms of being able to hold things down. It was about 32 ounces throughout a whole, throughout an entire day. I was fully able to work my way up to a gallon, but I wasn't going to be worried about if I can only drink 32 ounces a day, I'm not going to worry about making sure that it's like spinach or kale, nothing Mm -hmm. wrong with that, but it (laughs) wasn't for me. So I found myself thriving on grape juice, on orange juice, on pineapple juice. Right now I am actually drinking pineapple, dragon fruit, and orange. Oh, look at you. So you made, were you making all your juices or were you buying some too? Oh, no, I was making all my juices. Wow. And what juicer did you use? Did you use a slow masticating juicer or a fast one or? I did. I used an Omega for the beginning. Um, and then my omega, so I had a horizontal omega and horizontal juices aren't the best for soft fruits, which is what I was primarily juicing. So I ended up getting the Nama, uh, juicer about three quarters of my way through the juice fast. And I still use my Nama today. I hear that juice is great. I don't have it, but I hear it's really good. Yeah, it's and what was, what was your favorite juice on the, like, what did you love the most? Oh man. Um, so for a treat, I would really like to make lychee juice, believe it or not. Wow. There's a really cool market near my house with all sorts of exotic fruits and vegetables. And um, that was really good for, for a nice treat. But on, on the regular day, day to day, I loved orange juice. Just so simple and easy. I really didn't like making complicated juices. Three ingredients or less was just what was best for my budget and mm-hmm. uh, worked really well for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were some days when I was craving something a little savory. I would actually make a pineapple salsa juice. Wow. So just you are creative with your juices I gotta say if it's all you're having for a year you know you gotta yeah. you gotta change it up a little bit yeah, right so I'm wondering did you experience any like major detox symptoms when you were doing the juice cleanse and did you ever like maybe go through such detox or anything that you felt like maybe this isn't the right path maybe you should stop juicing or did you always, always sort of feel in your heart like this is right continue on at around day 200, things started getting pretty intense emotionally, though. Um, physical detox, I could never really tell what was detox versus what was just a normal symptom for me. Everything just seemed kind of status quo until things started improving, and they improved relatively quickly. Um, within 30 days, there was actually a noticeable difference in some of my lab work. I had a visual field test done that showed that um, the visual blind spots that I had been diagnosed with were completely gone within 30 days. Um, so that was pretty incredible to see. So what were the doctors saying when that happened? They were astounded. They had no idea what was going on, why it was working, but they were like, you know what? Go for it. You do you. <laughs> Good. So they were supportive then. <laughs> yeah. Towards the end. Yeah. And I had a doctor, uh, actually my cardiologist, I'm still in touch with him. I'm no longer a patient of his, um, but he actually will regularly send me over. Uh, well, he asked me if he could send patients who were diagnosed with similar things that I was, if he could send them my way. And to let them know that, hey, you don't have to live like this. Healing happens. Whether you decide to juice, whether you decide not to, just I'm a prime example. Yeah. It's really cool that he's been so supportive. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's pretty incredible uh, all the things that juicing has given me. And um, and so you feel, has it like totally healed everything? Like you literally feel like you're in like perfect health from the juicing? Perfect health. I think there's always ways to improve and always ways mm-hmm. to get better. Um, I'm definitely not where I want to be in terms of my physical activity level, but in terms of things that I was diagnosed with, um, I would say that my symptoms are very, very limited. I still have some, uh, my joints still move around a little bit from the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, but it's something that isn't manageable. And I know that if I wanted to, I could go deeper and I could do another juice cleanse. And I'm sure that would improve symptoms even more so. Um, mm-hmm. But where I am physically in terms of what I've healed, I'm no longer on any medications. I pulled out my own feeding tube. Uh, I got rid of all of my mobility devices. Um, I was able to do a 5K on day 366 of my juice fast last year. Oh, wow. So the thing, when I started, I couldn't walk from my front door to my mailbox. Wow. And I ended doing a 5K. And if you didn't do the juice, that's incredible. Like you're so awesome. And if you didn't do the juice cleanse, like let's say hypothetically, you didn't do that. Where do you think you would be right now? If you didn't do this? Probably dead. Crazy. I eh? unbelievable. Yeah. So it's so inspiring to me. And I'm wondering how, how, um, how is your diet right now? Like, are you able to tolerate foods? What does a day in your diet look like right now? Or do you still do? Ju- well, yeah, you do still juice. You just showed yeah. me your beautiful juice. Thank you. <laughs> I do still juice. I, an ideal day in my diet looks like 64 ounces of some type of, some type of fruit juice, 
um, as much fruit as I want, and then a big old salad for dinner. Yeah. Do I always get that? No. Do I always do that? No. My juice is not something I ever compromise on. When I was living in Hawaii, um, I was there for the past six months. It was supposed to be the first stop on a world tour after healing enough to go travel. Um, I ended up staying there, um, and I'm planning on going back. When I was living in Hawaii, though, I wasn't juicing as much, um, but I was eating a lot of water-rich fruit. Um, eating is no issue at all anymore. Thank that you. is so awesome. You must be so yeah. happy about that. And maybe that's just I, something we take for granted being able to eat. You know what I mean? When you could eat yeah. again, you're probably just so like grateful and overjoyed for that. I cried the first time I was able to, the first time I ate something, I did the prune test after day 306 on day 300. Um, no, after day 366, I did the prune test and eating these prunes, which were absolutely disgusting. Mind you, I was crying from gratitude that I was able to chew and swallow and they stayed down. Yay. <laughs> That's so awesome. What a story. So I, yeah, I was going to ask you how you broke the fast. So you use yeah. the prune test, which is you soak the prunes, right? For a certain period yeah. of time. And yeah, then you, you drink the water first, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's definitely a great way of ending a juice fast. I don't think that it was the right thing for me to do. I did it more because I was told that that was going to be the best thing for me instead of listening to my own inner voice, which was telling me, eat some watermelon. Um, I think if I had, because I had, I struggled after ending my juice fast. Um, it was a lot of it was mental and emotional because mm -hmm. it is such a big change to go from not being able to eat for at that point, six years to then eating. Six it was, years it was total. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah so no solid food for six years. Uh, and then all of a sudden here I am able to eat and it was like, whoa, hold on a second. I'm not ready for this. I'm not mentally prepared. Um, cause you don't realize how big of a deal food is until you can't have it. No. So I, I was, I think if I had listened to myself, um, and had that watermelon instead of the, doing, doing the prune test, I would have set myself up for success. Um, yeah, I feel it's funny. Cause whenever I did it at 37 days once, which is. Wow. It was, is nothing compared to what you've done, but it's still a long juice cleanse. And I think I broke it with prunes too, but it's funny. My gut said to do like watermelon or like a light melon to break it with. For me, yeah. I like that better rather than doing the prunes. I know a lot of people do the prunes, but I don't love that way either. And if it works for people, it works for people. I think the mm -hmm. most important thing though is that everyone listens to their body and does what's right for them. Mm -hmm. And my problem with the prune test isn't the prune test itself. It was that I wasn't listening to my body and doing what was right for me. I was listening mm -hmm. to my opinions. And that's something that I've learned to work on. And it was a beautiful reminder that yes, I've healed physically, but there's so much more that I can work on and so much more that I can grow and expand with. Um, so it was just a beautiful reminder of accept where you are, love where you are, but always keep striving to do more and do better. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I'm wondering if somebody is struggling with some health problems right now and they're interested in juicing and they want some direction, like what advice would you give them as to like how to start a juice cleanse? I feel like you are just the queen of juice cleansing. Do you have a book or like, do you have a book or anything? So I do have a, rest, a juice recipe ebook available okay. on my website, and I'm actually okay. writing a book right now about my, my juice story. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I do think of the biggest piece of advice. I, I have two pieces of advice um, in terms of juicing. One, always listen to your body. It knows best. It, it, someone could be telling you to do all fruit. Someone could be telling you to do veggies. Someone could be telling you to do this, that, and the other. doesn't matter, right? Take, listen to the things that are going on around you but pick what resonates with you because if you're not doing what's right for you, you're doing it wrong, period, end of story. If it's not right for you, it's not right. That's it. Um, someone else's truth is true for them, just like your truth is true for you. They don't negate each other. But if you're listening to someone else's truth over your own, then you're not listening to the truth because ultimately your experience is your experience and you have to dictate your own experience. And if you let somebody else dictate it for you, then is it really your own? So that's my biggest piece of advice, I guess, just in general, but really when it comes to juicing, listening to your own body and listening to your inner self, but second piece of advice. And I really, really wish someone had told me this before I started juicing, never trust a fart on a juice fast. Never trust a what? Never trust a fart on a juice I fast. I thought that's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you stop drinking at a certain time every day too? I know some people do that because they don't want to wake up in the night and stuff like that. I didn't. Um, I just made my juices throughout. I made my juice every morning and I would drink until I was done. Some days I finished all my juices within like 
four hours of making them. Other days, it just dragged on and on. It really just depended on how I was feeling. Because again, listening to my body was of the utmost importance. Mm-hmm. So if I felt like after two juices, I was done, I couldn't put anything else in my system. I never forced myself to drink more. And if I finished all four juices for my all um, the entire gallon of what I prepared for myself and I wanted more juice, I made more juice. It was never, mm-hmm. you have to be done by a certain time. You have to start by a certain time. You have to drink yeah. more these things. It was, you know, what my body can handle what my body's asking for is, but is what I'm going to give it. And that's it. And that's, what's great. That's what, that's what's healed you and essentially led you mm-hmm. to where you are by listening to yourself and listening to your body. It's yeah. truly inspiring. Cause I think it's easy just to listen to whatever YouTuber is saying or this and that, and get mm-hmm. disconnected from yourself. So I think what you're saying is just so bang on. So true. People really have mm-hmm. to listen to themselves, do what works for them and do what they believe will work for them. Because I think our thoughts and our feelings are so important as well. If you believe something's going to yeah. work, then I think there's power there too. A hundred percent. And, and our thoughts around, I was actually doing some thinking about this and I have a friend who um, is really into German new medicine and that's the belief system. That's really just what you believe around what's going on. It's more important than what's actually going on. It's your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Your mind is the most powerful healer. And I truly believe that if I had believed that juicing wasn't going to do anything, it wouldn't have done anything. And if I believed that sitting outside in the sun all day and, um, I don't know, clapping my hands every two minutes would have healed me, that's what would have healed me. Yeah. There's so much power there. Yeah. It's our brains. Our brains are the most powerful healers. And I, I, um, I read a lot of Joe Dispenza. I do a lot of Joe Dispenza, Mm -hmm. Louise Hay, and it's all about the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. What we put in our body is super important. How we feel ourselves is important, but how we feel our brains and our brains are what fuel our cells. So if our brains think a certain thing, if we let our brains think a certain thing, that's what it's going to affect our cells on a cellular level and on um, how our body on a, on a functional level. So I really believe um, in the power of food as medicine, but I really believe more than that in the power of the mind as medicine. Absolutely. Very well said. And I'm wondering on your juice cleanse, like how were your energy levels? Cause I know a lot of pe- people feel like if they do a cleanse like that, they sort of just have to sit at home and focus on a cleanse. For me, when I've done a juice cleanse, I have more energy than ever, but I know you were suffering from health problems too, before you did your juice cleanse. Like how were your energy levels on the cleanse? In the beginning, it was a little rough, but I wasn't getting enough in. But then again, I hadn't been getting enough in the past um, five years at that point. So It wasn't anything outside of the norm, but once I was able to, once I really started healing, once I was off all my medications, because I went off all medications during my juice fast, once I was able to drink enough and really sustain myself, I was able, I went from not being able to walk to my mailbox to doing a 5k. Yeah. That's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. What a story. Thank you. I was walking every day, multiple times a day. I was doing yoga. Um, I was working full time which I hadn't done um, since the army. I was also going to school full-time um, as an online student. Um, I was, I had another, I had uh, an internship with a nonprofit. I was also a private tutor during that time. So all this energy just came up out of nowhere. Well, actually not out of nowhere, out of um, all the fruit sugar. Yeah, the juices. <laughs> it's funny because I have way more energy than ever on a juice cleanse. It, I'm way more productive on the juice cleanse than even in yeah. like real life on my raw diet. And that's a pretty high vibe, like high energy diet as it is. A hundred percent. And I don't know if you experienced this, but when I was on that year of juice, I barely needed to sleep. I would sleep maybe yeah. five hours a night and be so refreshed and so well rested. Yeah, I experienced that um, when I do cleanses. Yeah. Whereas now like I can get eight hours and still wake up tired. Yeah, exactly. It's, just, it's a whole nother level. And did you find it a deep spiritual experience doing the juice cleanse as well? Oh, a hundred percent. And you had asked me earlier about detox symptoms. Um, the biggest actual detox that I experienced was emotional detox around day 200 things started looking really, really bleak emotionally. Um, there were days where I just didn't want to get out of bed and there were some days that I didn't. And, um, but once I powered through that, uh, cause I told myself like, at that point, I had created an Instagram account for myself when I was um, holding myself accountable through on, um, through being online through this internet community. And I knew that if I gave up, I'd have to like put it out there and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to, <laughs> I, I would have been too embarrassed. So that's what really kept me going. Um, but once I made it through that dark phase, everything looked so much brighter. And I feel like mm-hmm. I did a lot of spiritual healing through that experience. Yeah. Um, When you push through that on a cleanse, the emotional detox for me too, is can just be so deep and hard and like the hardest part. But if you're able to get through that, then you just reach like these new highs. It's kind of just like childbirth or something. It's crazy. How, like, do you have tips for anybody? And I hope like, I'm assuming maybe you'll share on that in the book. Cause I think that's important. I think a lot of people experience emotional detox and 
how did you handle getting through that? Did you meditate or do you have some tips? I did a lot of meditation, um, also yoga, but really what helped me the most was recognizing that I am not my thoughts and I am not my emotions, that I'm just observing these thoughts and I'm observing these emotions. And sometimes the brain lies because is it really the brain or is it the parasites or whatever's living inside you? Sometimes it lies. And if you recognize, if you're able to not attach to, if it's not, uh, you're not, I'm not sad, I am feeling sad. If you have that detachment and you recognize, oh, this is an emotion that I'm experiencing, but just like this emotion came in, it will also go out. So just letting it flow, letting it breathe and not trying to change or control any emotions either. When I was feeling really, really low, I remember I was trying so hard to make myself happy and that wasn't working because I was fighting and I was resisting. The more you resist something, especially when it comes to emotions, which are just energy and motion, the more you resist, the tighter they're gonna hold on because they're there for a reason. So if you sit, and you think, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. Thank you for thank you for whatever you're here to teach me. I appreciate the lesson and just sit with it and then let it flow. It'll flow out on its own. So true. You're gonna have the most amazing book ever. It's so you're so well spoken. It's so true. And I love how you said, like, I am not sad, I am feeling sad. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Thank you. Just yeah. having that attachment and recognizing that you are so much more than the story that's going on in your head. Mm-hmm. And it's important. I mean, the emotional, emotional detox can be so hard and just emotions in general and people dealing with. So, um, I'm wondering too, you, you dropped, you talked about parasites there for a second. So I've had experience with that as well. Did you release any parasites on your clients and did you do any colonics or enemas? So I wish I could answer that question. Honestly, I was too afraid to look. (laughs) Yeah, it makes sense. I'm sure that I did though. Uh, before, the, before juicing, before my health story really started, um, I had the standard American diet. So I'm sure there was stuff living inside my gut, uh, which did need to be there. Um, but as far as colonics and enemas, yes, I'm a big fan of coffee enemas. I still do them. I um, actually did one this morning. And in terms, I have done one colonic in my life. I wasn't the I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I don't yeah. know if it was because uh, I did a closed system, I believe. Okay. It was because of the type of system that I did. It wasn't, it wasn't the best experience I've had, but I really enjoy coffee enemas. I think it's a great way to start the day for me personally, just knowing that I'm allowing all these things to flush out of me. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, but- absolutely. Yeah. And I think people will maybe want to know, and I want to know too, I forgot to ask, how was your overall diet like growing up? Like what was your diet like, you know, growing up before the health problems? Oh, growing up, it was standard American. And on top of that, I used food. Um, I, I was an emotional eater. Um, yeah. So I'd experienced a lot of trauma early on in my life. And um, I was an emotional eater and I was a secret eater. So after everyone went to bed, I would go downstairs and speak all the snacks that I knew I shouldn't be having. And then I would feel awful about myself. And um, I'd repeat the cycle pretty much every night. It was how I learned to deal with problems. So not only was, did I not have the best diet throughout the day, um, based on what I know now to be the ideal diet, at least for me, um, I also compounded that by being an emotional eater and a secret eater. And it wasn't so much what I was eating because, I mean, Oreos aren't good no matter how you cut it, right? Um, but it wasn't so much the Oreos that I was sneaking. It was my mindset around it, that I had to do it in hiding, that I had to do it in the secret, um, and that I was binging. So i never really had a, a great relationship with food. I'd always used it um, instead of recognizing that food is fuel. Food was a Band-Aid. Mm-hmm. So my diet was not good. And my mindset, I think more than my diet, my mindset around food wasn't good. It was very unhealthy, very toxic. Well, that's great. You've overcome that. It's a, a, just you. a beautiful story. And it's true. Like food does so much for us. And food is meant to like nourish us, energize us, make us feel just amazing, not make us feel tired. And like we need a nap. Yeah, 100%. Um, and a lot of the time, it's not just the food too. It's the way we think about that food. If I thought that if I was eating those Oreos, um, because they were nourishing me, or if I felt that they were nourishing me, I'm sure my body would have had a different reaction to them than what it did. But because I felt the guilt and the shame around them, my body was holding on to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not saying that Oreos are the ideal food, right? But just the way that we think about that food is also so important too. It's not just what's on our plate. It's our mindset about what's on our plate. Mm -hmm. I so agree. I so agree with that, with what you just said right there. Thank you. Yeah. 
Well, this is just so awesome. I mean, if there's anything else you'd like to share about your story that I haven't asked you or anything you sort of want to leave off with the viewers um, or anything to just inspire people, please feel free to do so right now. I think I've asked everything I sort of prepared to ask. I mean, I was going to ask if you're writing a book, but you are doing that. And you mentioned maybe doing some sort of world tour. I feel like you're just so inspiring. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Well, the plan was to be in Hawaii for a couple of months, then go to Israel, visit some family, see some friends, and then travel to Southeast Asia. But with everything that's going on right now and all the borders being shut down, um, things are starting to open up, but a lot of people or a lot of places are requiring a vaccine, and that's not something I'm prepared to do mm -hmm. um, under any circumstances. Um, I believe that, and this is not going against anyone who wants to do anything. I, I believe that everyone should do what they feel is best for their body. Mm -hmm, me too. I don't feel that a vaccine is the best thing for my body. So therefore I will not be doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm the same. I respect what everyone does for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, I, what everyone chooses to do for themselves is beautiful. And I trust that other people are adult enough to do their own research and make their own decisions and come to their own conclusions. And mm -hmm. I would hope that other people had that same trust in me. Mm -hmm. um, I really just, I'm at the mindset. I keep my eyes on my own plate. I focus, stay in my own lane, do mm -hmm. my own thing. I trust that the people around me are doing the same. Um, that's what builds, I think, mutual respect and trust. And um, But with everything that's going on, traveling right now isn't the most practical thing. Um, I am back visiting family. I plan on going back to Hawaii sometime soon. Um, but in terms of just a message. I mean, I think the really, the most important thing that I can share is that healing happens and it does not matter what you're going through, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, I've been through it all. I have had some pretty terrible experiences in my life. Aside from being sick, I was in an abusive relationship for three years. Uh, that was abusive in every sense of the word. I've had a lot of childhood trauma that I've worked through. Um, I've been through a lot of things and healing happens. It doesn't matter what, what the situation is, if it's physical, mental, emotional, um, if it's some sort of trauma, whatever it is, healing happens. Um, that, I mean, there's no other way to put it other than if you believe that you will heal, you will heal. That's it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very well said. Absolutely. Well, this has been so amazing. I have loved having you on and I do hope you will come back after you've written your book to talk more about your book. Thank you. I would love that. I would, I'd be honored. Yeah. And where can everyone find you right now? Um, as far as like social media, is there anywhere you want to share where people can find you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram as the year of juice. Also on Facebook, the year of juice. Um, I will actually be starting a YouTube channel, which I would love to have you on as well, if you'd like. Amazing. I would love that. <laughs> and there's you. one other thing I want to ask you. So sorry, share where, wherever else you're available first. Uh, I think those are the main places right now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And so just, so now you sort of are on a mostly raw vegan diet. It sounds like, right? Yeah. I'm yeah mostly raw. Um, however, if I do feel like the need to have, or the desire to have roast vegetables, I'm not going to yeah. deny myself roast vegetables, you know? Yeah, that's great. And you probably notice like on your diet now versus before everything, like a big mental change too, right? Like a deeper mental clarity and you're like, you're yeah, happier. 100%. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I feel much more spiritually connected. And when I was living in Hawaii, I was living on a raw vegan farm, actually for the majority of the time. And we were harvesting our own food and I helped with the planting of the food. So really, I think that was the most connected I felt and most grounded and most spiritual I felt when I was going out to the land, I'd walk there barefoot and, you know, pick, um, I, I, I pick some abu from the tree and bite into it right then and there. That was something that I helped curate, helped create. Um, and I got the experience of holding it in my hand, fresh, farm fresh. I didn't have to wait for it to go to a farmer's market and pick it up from there. Directly farm fresh from the from the tree. I got to thank the tree for providing me for the fruit, thank the fruit for providing me with the nourishment and eat it right there on the spot. I think that was the most uh, connected I've ever felt with food. And um, if you can get to a place where you can grow your own food or if you have that opportunity to even just go to a farm and pick some pick some fruit, I think that's I think that's the most high vibe it gets, you know, going Absolutely. to the grocery store and being right there as it happens. It's so much more alive that way versus when it's picked and sent to a grocery store, which don't get me wrong. I eat mostly from the grocery store, but it loses so much of the life even. Yeah, that's, I've noticed that as well. And the quality of produce is just so different. And I feel like in order to have, you need to eat so much more um, because the quality of the produce is dramatically reduced. That's something I've been struggling with too, figuring out that balance of knowing that there are some fruits and vegetables that are better in terms of quality of, of the produce based on where it's grown and the, and the type of soil that it's in, but it's also being trucked in from far away. So they impact on the environment and trying to I find know. that between everything. Yeah. 
that yes, I need to take care of myself, but I'm also part of a system. And how do I take care of the system best other than just, you know, moving back and growing food on my own land? Yeah. Well, I feel like there's just so much to come for you. And I feel like this has kind of led you down that path and you look amazing and you have such a good vibe, such a good energy. And you're just like a ray of light. I can't help but smile just when you talk. So you're contagious and you're amazing energy. Wow. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. It's so true. So I truly appreciate you being on and sharing your story. It's been so nice talking to you. I've loved it. So we will end it off right now. And thank you guys for watching. I do hope you guys gained value from this. Make sure you do hit the like button. Give me a subscribe because I create great videos just like this one every single week. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.